Hey YouTube, just a random video I wanted to put up. I've been listening to old episodes of Veracast, which is a Catholic podcast, or as the host Tim Haynes would put it, the hardest hitting Catholic podcast on or off the internet. I mean, whether or not that was a good impression, I wasn't trying, so. Um, I mean, and there, an episode they shot back in January. Yes, I am taking it that far back. An episode they shot in January, Living the Radical Faith. Now, for months, for years upon years now, we have been hearing radical as a term to mean extreme, extremist, or a person who does things outside the established order. However, I found out that the word radical means root. So if you say a person is a radical Muslim, and I say that as an intentional example, then you are saying that that person is a true Muslim because he is going back to the root of what Islam teaches. No need, no need to go further on that topic, but that's not the topic I want to talk about. In Throughout the episode, there was emphasis that you should not care. And I say this for those Catholics who have been either lukewarm by decision, lukewarm by fear, or they want to show their Catholic identity in all that they do, but are worried about re repercussions from the people that you care about, your friends, your family, or the people that care about you. It should not matter. And I say this with all kindness and respect for who you are, but it should not matter what they think of you if they are not willing to listen and learn and live the truth. We live for God first. So if you go to Mass, and like they made a point of saying, if you go to Mass and you want to receive Christ in the Eucharist on your knees, because you understand who is there, do so. And do not feel any shame at, the, at anyone who may try and say, who are you to say you're holier than me? There's nothing keeping them from getting up out of the moral morass they may be in. So, being holy is not your problem. Being holy is your calling. Every one of the church fit militant and church faithful are called to be faithful to Christ first not the opinions of others and that is my that is how i have lived my life ever since i decided ever since i was dragged back to the church and i mean people people on my facebook and on my twitter and anywhere else i'm at as far as my social media accounts they can tell i have a big mouth when it comes to what's going on in the world so i don't really care and I mean, and I have ha and I have lost friends and people that I knew because I am unafraid to say what needs to be said. I am not one of those Catholics who gets more excited at seeing the next big winner of America's Got Talent or, for example, something that I came across recently, somebody that I, that I met at a religious retreat. For that the that the archdiocese had put on before someone that I met there, she was more excited about seeing Miley Cyrus. Miley n hanging from a wrecking ball, naked Cyrus. I, on my speaking for myself, I have no earthly clue. Why anyone would be excited to see her when all she does is follow in the trashy footsteps of Lady Gaga, Madonna, Katy Perry, all those other diva, hip-hop divas who are prancing, the, creatively prancing themselves toward hell with every unrepentant act that they make. 
so where was I? I ran off the track. <laughs> and people who know me also know that I have a tendency to do that too. Uh, so let me see, what was I? Ah, uh, yes. You, we should be more excited about events for the events in the church, events concerning the church and the welfare of souls before becoming excited about like something so trivial as what's showing up in the media, the entertainment media rather. And I say this especially and to cut myself off that on that end, just let me bring just let me start a little something else. Speaking for myself, as I said, I was dragged back to the church. People who do not know me as well as they think, I was living in such a state of sin from fourth grade to about eighth grade. That's eighth to ninth grade. It's four to five years of my life. My soul was gone. And I don't mean that in saying, oh, I sold my soul, sold my soul to the devil. No. I spent and gave away the graces that Christ gives every soul that willingly follows him with a pure heart, pure mind, and is willing to do what need be done to follow him. For four to five years, I was in a state where if something had happened to me, and I died, I would have spent an eternity having myself roasted in hell, among any other tortures that I'm sure Satan conceived, has conceived of over, since his rebellion against God and his to being tossed into hell. So me being dragged back to the church, that was the best thing that has ever happened to me because it showed me that what the world thinks is important is nothing. It thinks nothing is important but its own opinions. And those opinions will lead anybody who follows them to hell. And I say this because I care. I want to let, in everything that I do, in every article I post, and it, and it can sometimes go up into the double digits of articles that I post on my Facebook. I post everything that I do because I care about people and because I want them to be aware of what is going on in this world. Because for too long, it has been ignored. Because either because there has been an agenda to subvert the faith in people and to make them reject it. So in other words, the media, the, the popular news media, CNN, ABC, MSNBC, especially MSNBC, knuckleheads, all of them. They think that people are too stupid to be told the truth. Or that it would be more convenient to be told what the party thinks. As we have seen by the whole Obama running away from the truth about the Obamacare fiasco. They don't want to blame and they want to blame everyone else. But who is responsible? But anyway, back to what I was saying. When if you believe in your heart of hearts that you need to follow Christ in what he is saying to you, even if it leads you to the church. And that is a good thing. That is where it's supposed to lead you, because it is his church. He gave it to us, and it has survived everything that the world has, world and Satan has sent against it. Over 2,000, in 2033, it will be exactly 2,000 years old on Pentecost Sunday, when the Holy Spirit brought tongues of fire to the twelve apostles or the remaining twelve apostles I will have to look that up and yes I am not 
I might not be as good as a Catholic as I think I am, but that's the whole point. I learn. I accept that I have shortcomings, and I get past them. I learn. Anyway. But the church, in 2033, on Pentecost Sunday, the church will be 2,000 years old. Nothing else has ever survived that long on the earth, except, not even except anything. No other organization, organized religion, has survived as long as that, because it is Christ-centered. God himself gave it to us. So who is the world to say, you shouldn't follow that because they're so close-minded? In reality, when someone is so close-minded that they do not, when someone denies a reality, they close their mind. So they are trying to shift their doubts and their suspicions about themselves to you. I mean, as essentially, as we used to all here, be a man. Man up. Sometimes to do, to do the right thing, it's going to be hard. But that doesn't change it as being the right thing to do. And I guess I just put... I guess the whole reason I started this video was because tonight on Veracast, again, plug number two for them. Awesome show. They are talking about unmasking the Pope. Not in a negative way, but talking about who he is, where he comes from. And in the poster that they had on the side yesterday, they had the like the black mask, that whole thing, the Zorro mask, essentially. Which is ironic, considering that Zorro is a major hero within the Hispanic community. Or at least last I heard. And the other thing about Zorro, he's Catholic. And I said all of what I'm saying about the show in a comment to the Ver to Veracast on their Facebook page. Um, go have a look. Have a wonderful time there. You'll learn something. <laughs> um, and Zorro, what the media would what the media would like to have you forget is that he was Catholic. I mean, look at as I said on there in the comment also. Look at the Legend of Zorro with Antonio Banderas in 2005. He besought. Besought, beseeched, I'll have to look that one up too. <laughs> he prayed to the Blessed Virgin to help him be strong enough to do what need be done. That is manhood. That is courage. And for too long now, I have seen young men in the Catholic, who claim to be Catholic, but are more worldly than they're, but profess the world more than they profess Christ in their actions and in their words. And my approach to being a Catholic man, it, it, it evolved, honestly. It came through, it, I mean, I'm, it could have started out, I don't know, in the kind of films that I watched, the chivalrous knights, swashbuckling movies that you get in the golden age of Hollywood. I mean, where a man was unafraid to take, unsheathe his sword when he, saw, when he saw injustice being done. That is what we are called to do. And the more I learned about the faith, and the more I dug, and the more I dug into history, into what has actually happened over the ch history of the church, I have found more men in the saints and in their brave defense of Christendom when it was still a, when it when you when you could still say that Europe was a Christian continent with a surety um, Pardon the pause, I just, I, some, my brain, some, you know, we all have them, the brain parts. Anyway, um, so what, so what if 
But defending, defending the truth is what we sometimes need to do. So what if we die? It's so what? Christ died. He came knowing that he was going to die. And he still did what he had to do. That is love. That is bravery. And that is what we all need to aspire to. I mean, and speaking for myself, to help emphasize that ideal of Catholic manhood, everyone knows me, also knows that I am an avid swordsman. Made all self-taught, yes. But this is something where I think it emphasize everything that is associated with being a swordsman, be being willing to pick to pick up something so symbolic is truly connected with being faithful to God because of the teachings that follow follow the lessons you receive in swordsmanship you you not only have you not only learn how to wield a sword in knowing the different defensive postures, attack areas, but you also learn how and when and why you should learn it. Why you should use it. How you, why, either for defense of yourself in just causes, and defense of others when they are needing physical defense against those who oppress them and what and when never in anger only in defense the crusades were all about def the crusades were about defending the pilgrims who were on who on their way to the holy land were attacked by radical Muslims who see who saw Christians as nothing more than sinners to be consigned to hell with no hope of redemption to God the church did not stand for that and the church and the church called for its members to rise up in unity with their persecuted brethren in America we need to be willing to do the same Catholic men you, just as you would stand up for your wife if she was attacked, stand up for the church when it is attacked. Be a man in God's eyes and defend what he has taught, what he, through the church, has taught you to be right. Vivo Cristo Rey, viva Virgin de Guadalupe.